Hey you guys, Jesse Raymond here. So I've got a really special interview planned for you. I'm bringing back Kinsey. You guys know I've previously interviewed her about her recovery. Uh, she's a previous client of mine and together we got her recovered from bulimia, orthorexia, and atypical anorexia. She's so inspiring. And now she has actually lost her overshoot from recovery. And since I know that you guys are always asking me for more about overshoot, uh, and I also think that it's important that you guys hear about it and the possibilities and what can truly happen from more than just me. So I'm really excited about this interview. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and cut over to it. <laughs> Hi, Kinsey. Hi. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Good, thanks. So it sounds like since last we talked, you have lost some overshoot, right? I have, yes. That's so exciting. So uh, thank you so much for being willing to come on here and share your story and your experience with that. It's such a common question, and I know this is going to help so many people to, again, just hear it from somebody else and have proof that it's possible. So thank you. Of course. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Of course. Okay, so I've got my list of questions here. So why don't we just start by saying, so if you guys haven't, if you're not already familiar with her, um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Because um, I'm Kinsey. I had three eating disorders for about a year and a half. Um, and then I started recovery with Jesse. I went through recovery for a little over a year. Um, and I just recently stopped back in August, um, because Jesse felt that I was at a point, Jesse and I agreed that I was at a point, um, that I no longer needed our sessions because I was functioning well enough. I was being intuitive, um, and I was able to overcome those battles. So, so proud of you. So proud of you. Um, if you, so we do have another interview together. So if you guys want to go ahead and watch that. Um, I do have that posted on my channel. All right. So without further ado, did you believe that it was even possible to lose overshoot? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, which no. is so funny because that's one of the things that I notice a lot of people make videos about a lot of resources are about like, it will come back off. And I saw all these people who were like, yeah, I mean, all of my overshoot weight came off and the entire time I'm like, but not for me. There's no way. Like we've always talked about, I'm the special unicorn. Like it's not going to happen. <laughs> and then it did. And like the entire time I, when I was gaining weight, I thought I was just going to keep gaining forever. I was going to be on the show, like my 500 pound life. And like, oh, yeah. gosh. I was certain that there was no way that I was ever going to be back down to a spot where I was super comfortable with my body. And I was just going to have to be bigger for the rest of my life because that's just how this was going to work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I think that that's so common, you know, everybody that, that I talk to feels that way too. I swear we should make like the unicorn, the official mascot of recovery. Yes. Because <laughs> we're um, all special unicorns. That's right. That's right. Um, so because you didn't believe in it, what was it that changed your mind or, you know, was it a rewiring process? You know, what do you, yeah. Um, so I feel like the problem that I was having with not believing that it was going to happen was I was so focused on it happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I feel like my self-love was definitely the key to it. Once I focused on loving my body as it was, as I came, um, I realized that I wasn't looking for that weight to come off. I wasn't aiming for it to come off. I was just living, you know, I was doing my self-love exercises. I was learning to appreciate my body. All of the things that I had originally saw as flaws. I was learning to love those things. Um, and then I just, it happened. Like I didn't have to force it. I wasn't paying attention to it. And I just noticed it one day. So that was really nice. <laughs> so was it slow? Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. I, it wasn't until like a substantial amount of 
weight loss had happened that I even realized it was happening because of how slow the process was. It was so gradual that it took months after being fully recovered to even realize that my overshoot was coming off. So important to, to bring that up for sure. Cause I think people can expect it to happen fast. You know? Exactly. Like, okay. So my weight gain happened really fast when oh, I started yeah. recovering. Oh, yeah. It was instant, you know, within the first week I felt the bloating, I could see it like things weren't fitting and I just kept gaining weight and it was so fast. It was so quick. And so I think because that process was fast, automatically we expect the opposite to be fast as well. Of course. And it's not like that. Your body is learning to trust you again. It's just like your relationship with another person. Mm -hmm. You have a relationship with your body when you break trust with somebody it gradually comes back. And I feel like that's the same way that our bodies respond to overshoot. Totally. Yeah. Well said. So well said. And I think um, before we even go any further with talking about overshoot, what I want to do is bring to light real quick, something that I talk about a lot now. And that is that you can become 100% recovered or at least pretty darn close without ever even losing a pound yet. Yeah. So would you say that you had reached feeling pretty, at least fully recovered or pretty close, at least most, you know, 80, 90% of the time before any overshoot had come off? Yes, completely. So I stopped, I believe our, my last session with you was in August. Um, cause we did our last interview in September August of, um, uh, 2020. Yes. I'm like, where are we? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it could be yeah. 2025 right now. And I'd be like, oh yeah, just yesterday. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. Um, 2020, I believe. Okay. August of 2020 is when we had our last session. Okay. And I didn't notice my overshoot dropping until December. So what's that? That's like four and a half months. After and it wasn't even... Yeah. Okay after being fully recovered. And I didn't notice any overshoot coming off when I had decided to stop our sessions. Okay. So yep. it was that full four months after deciding that I had become fully recovered or at least close yeah. that I even noticed it. Okay. And then in the grand scheme of like, from the day we started mm -hmm. to that December where you uh, were starting to notice it, how long were you in recovery before any overshoot even started to show signs of coming off? Um, honestly, like I probably the summer. So I was in recovery for probably a year before I started to notice anything coming off. That's what I wanted to know. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was about a year and a half for me. So sometimes people can hear that and go, Oh my God, that sounds like so long. And it's just to show like, this is so different, um, for everybody. Uh, and I yeah. think again, I, what I always tell people too, is like, I didn't have all the information up front that I have now in terms of like the, the self-love and the affirmations piece and, and the Enneagram and all those kinds of things that, that luckily I had by the time I was able to um, start helping you. So yeah. I think that just as an example, and I'm not saying it's always going to be the exact same amount of time for everybody, yeah. but um, it just shows you that that streamlined the process a little bit. So, anyway. and I feel like another thing is when we notice that it's not coming off, it kind of makes us want to retreat. And yeah. that was the biggest thing for me is I didn't fully give in and that's what drug it out so much because mm -hmm. I started recovery, I think it was June, either June or July, but I'm pretty sure it was June. Okay. And I didn't allow myself to go into actual recovery until like October, November. Ooh, that's a good point. So I wasn't giving into cravings. I wasn't stopping my exercising. I wasn't actually like I was gathering the information, but I wasn't going through the actual process until months later. Mm -hmm. It was almost half a year after I'd actually started recovery okay. that I started recovery, you know? Definitely. Yeah. Because you have to be in that place where you're just like, okay, I'm letting this happen. And I know, like we talked about in our last interview, 
you were just like, mm -hmm, this crazy lady, like, I'm not doing this, you know, <laughs> because keep in, <laughs> keep in mind, you guys, like, she had to have her mom bring her to me, so, like, I said from the start, like, I don't know if she's even going to be open-minded to this, um, yeah, so it took a while, you know, and I'm not, like, anyway, I wasn't there to force you, you totally no. were ready to do it on your own, but, but the, I love that you brought that up, is, like, even though you kind of started the processes, it's, like, you don't officially start until you're like, okay, for lack of a better we're doing word, this. Yes. We're going all in as like, they'd like to say in this community. So, um, before any overshoot had started to show signs of coming off, do you feel that you had at least for the most part come to really love and accept your body where it was even at its heaviest? Yes, completely. Okay. I feel like, so I took, I mentioned this in the last video, but I took a section of time off. I shut out the world. So like the only people I had communication with were the people that I live with and like the people that I went to see. I turned off my phone for, I think it was like two and a half, three months. I, it was during my summer vacation. So I didn't need that contact. Um, and I just focused on me. I focused on loving myself. I learned a whole bunch of new self-love exercises. Um, I focused on journaling. I wrote myself letters multiple times throughout that section. Well, not really myself. I wrote my body letters. So it was like, the, they started out as apologies and then thank yous. And then they gradually like became appreciative. They became, yeah. instead of how dare you, thank you so much for being by my side type thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so by the time I had decided to stop my sessions with you, I'd say two months before that, I was at my heaviest if I had to like okay. guesstimate. And I fully loved myself. I accepted my body for what it was. I still have like occasional days where I wake up and I'm like, Whew, okay, we need to do some self-love exercises because we're obviously not at a hundred today. But for the most part, it was like, you're genuinely beautiful. Your body is genuinely beautiful. And I reached that way before I even realized that my overshoot was coming off. That's amazing. probably a good two months before I realized. Wow. That's amazing. And that was just because of practicing saying those things to yourself, even when you didn't believe them, would you say? Yeah. I feel like that, that was definitely the biggest part of self-love because you were like, yeah, I mean, you have to tell yourself that you love yourself. And I'm like, so you want me to lie to myself constantly? Okay. <laughs> and then eventually it's definitely like the fake it till you make it thing. Cause eventually it wasn't, yeah. I mean, I love myself. It was, yeah, I love myself. It just so. started to kind of like sink in as you did that rework. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And I think it's so critical to bring this up is that, um, you know, kind of as you were already talking about when you stay so focused on losing overshoot you're con you're essentially constantly telling your body I don't love you I don't accept you you need to change like now like yesterday exactly. like why isn't this happening and from my experience and I'm sure you can say now with yours that's not gonna happen it's just nope. not um the more you focus on why it's not there the more you focus on how much you don't like the way you look you are constantly um, reaffirming that you don't, you're not happy with it. And, and so therefore your body's saying, okay, you're not happy. Like let's, you're, all you're saying is you are this. Okay. I'm showing you more of this. So, yeah. So yeah, it's so important. Okay. So then you hit December of, mm -hmm. of 2020 and you start yep. to notice signs. What were, um, because it's like you said, it's slow. What were the first couple signs that you noticed? Like, I guess before I even say that, were you off the scale the whole time or were you constantly checking? Yeah, I haven't been on the scale for at least a year at this point, probably like, a little more than that. So I have no idea. I mean, I, okay. So when I first realized that I was gaining some weight, I got on the scale, okay. but I haven't, I didn't weigh at my heaviest. So I don't know what my heaviest weight was. Okay. And then I didn't weigh when I noticed okay. any coming off just because I don't want that to affect anything. You know, I can see the difference. But I've gotten taller since the last time I've weighed. 
I've been working out. I've gotten muscle since the last time I weighed. And I just, I don't see the point in stepping on the scale at this point because I'm not going to gain anything from it. If anything, it could hinder me. If I see a number, there's a potential that it could trigger something just because I am recovered, but there's still things that get to me. You know, I'm still human. I'm still a two. So I'm looking to please, I'm looking to, you know, be my best self. Um, and so I avoided that. Um, but it did, it was in my clothes. So I had went shopping. I do one shopping spree every year, usually in August, right before the new school year starts. And the previous year, uh, 2019, um, I had bought a pair of shorts and I was still at like my eating disorder size. Um, and so I bought a pair of shorts. Your, your like lowest body weight or, or smallest? Yeah, I was probably a couple pounds above my lowest just because I had started recovery, but I hadn't given in. So I had gained a little bit, but not enough for it to be like substantial. Yeah, because um, we started what in uh, like this June of 2019? Yeah. Okay, okay. Got it. Um, so it was probably like two months after I'd started recovery that I had went on the shopping spree and I was still like pretty small at that point. Um, and so I had these shorts and when I fully gave into recovery, they didn't fit. Like I genuinely could not even get them up over my thighs. There was just no doing it. Um, and I broke down, like that was definitely a main stressor for me it was like oh my god I'm really gaining weight like oh wow I was terrified like I'm pretty sure I cried over my shorts for like a day straight like I was so upset and I tried again during during my recovery and they still didn't fit um and so I'd finally decided to take them out of my drawer and I didn't want to get rid of them so I put them in the top of my closet um And then December, I was organizing, reorganizing everything, and I brought them down. And so I made sure that I was in a proper mindset beforehand. Um, I did a self-love exercise right before, because if they didn't fit, I didn't want it to wreck anything. Um, And so I kind of mentally prepared myself. And then it was just trying them on because I didn't want to keep something that didn't fit, but I didn't want to get rid of something that did. So I put them on and they fit. And not only could I get them over my thighs, I could buckle them and zip them and wear them. Oh, so, oh. and then there was another one, my ring. So oh, okay. I, had, I hadn't thought to measure, remeasure my finger. So during recovery, when I had gained a lot of weight, I had taken a measurement because I was getting ready to buy a new ring. And I was a size eight at the time. And so, um, my partner, he just recently was like, Hey, I want to do promise rings. Can you get me a ring size? And I didn't even think to remeasure. I was like, yeah, I'm a size eight. And then it came in and it was way too big. And I was like, no. I'm not a size eight. Because <laughs> 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 like, it's, so it's just your finger, but like, no, you can tell in those little things, you know? And so that was really cool. That's amazing. Yeah. See, so even without checking the scale, right, you were just basing this off of over time, what was happening with your clothes and jewelry and things like that. Yeah. That's amazing. Has it still been steadily coming off? Are you still kind of like staying consistent right where you, where you feel like you started to notice it? Because the reason I'm asking is for me, the way it would go is like, I'd notice my clothes being a little bit looser and then I'd stay there for a while And then it would drop a little bit more and things like that. So like everybody's process is different. Um, Right. Um, So I think for me, those were my two like main measurings just because I'm not getting on the scale. So I can't really tell if it's consistent or not. I mean, like I obviously have the regular fluctuations that come with just like your hormones and daily life and things like that. But, um, I'm not really sure if it's consistent or not. Like, I don't feel as if I'm consistently losing weight, but I also didn't realize that I was losing weight when like before my shorts fit, you know? So I could be, I'm not certain. 
Um, but the biggest thing is I'm happy with where my body is at. So if I stay where I'm at, that's great. If I lose more, that's also great. Um, because my body's doing what it wants to do because I'm not doing anything. Like I, so I'm in dance, I'm in a dance class right now. So I do like, um, yeah, it's just through my school. Um, it's one of my like elective credits. And so I'm dancing four out of seven days a week. Um, and then if I have energy on those other three days, then I'm doing just a workout or going for a walk or whatever it is that I feel like doing at the time, maybe a yoga session. If something aches and I want to try and work that out type thing. Um, but as far as working out is going, like, I'm not going to the gym every day. I'm not putting in two, three, four hours. Like I was at one point, like it's literally so simple. If I feel like doing yoga, I do some yoga. If I feel like dancing, I dance a little bit. It's just as far as that goes, it's just based on my energy levels. And I listen to my body. I was really exhausted the other day. And so I didn't do anything. I read my book all day and I relaxed and I didn't work out. I didn't go on a walk like I had planned in the morning because I didn't feel like it. And then as far as food, I eat everything. (laughs) I eat whatever I want. Some days I wake up and I feel like yogurt and some fruit. Other days I wake up and I want a five course breakfast. Like it just, it varies. Um, my, I don't count calories anymore. It's all like, we've kind of outlawed the word calories in all of my houses. Cause I stay at a few different places, but calories isn't a thing anymore. We all say energy. Mm-hmm. Um, but my energy definitely, my energy intake varies because some days I eat for every single meal. I eat large portions for every single meal. The following day, maybe I have like a granola bar for breakfast and just a few things for lunch, a few things for dinner. Just, I allow my appetite to do what it wants. And I don't, I work really hard to not group my foods because that was something that I struggled with. This is healthy. This is junk food. I think this is food and this is food. I'm hungry. This sounds great. Um, So I'm listening to my body a lot more and I'm, I haven't dieted. I haven't dieted since I fully gave into recovery. So, and it's coming up and it's so easy. That, that's the that's coolest amazing. part. Amazing. So you obviously have not created some severe, rigorous workout program. You're eating like from whether it's fruits, vegetables, so-called perceived healthy foods, but also sugar and carbs and fats and chocolate bars sometimes and things like that. Do you ever have days where it's like the entire day you you don't really want as many things like fruits and vegetables and then other days it changes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I still have days like that. And usually what happens is those days come after days that all I had was fruit and veggies and like your healthier items, you know? Um, So like if I, focused on salads and all of that one day then the following day it's usually like I'm craving my sugars my carbs all of that because my body's balancing itself out you got it yep because I get uh that's actually something people ask a lot is like um you know why is it that some days I'm just like all I want to eat is sugar and pizza and things like that and then some days um you know like you just said it's it's salads and vegetables and whatever else they consider to be on the healthier side and you're exactly right it's it's not a wrong it's not a right or a wrong thing it's just what your body does and and it's it's uh you're following your cravings and as long as you do that it does come back into balance like you talked about where within the same day you're going to want some of all of it and it is going to change all the time right yeah. so that's something i've definitely noticed because i thought that once I figured out recovery, that it would become like consistent. I would be eating the same things every day and my energy levels would always be the same. It's a constant roller coaster. (laughs) Like it's constantly up and down and up and down. Sometimes I have a surplus of energy. Sometimes I have no energy and it just depends. There's nothing, there's not like a one size fits all for my days at all. Absolutely. So other than, you know, the things we've talked about, is there anything else that you could say, like, that you believe contributed heavily to you being able to lose some of the overshoot? 
Um, so definitely like your support. I feel like being able to call on you when those things are happening, because people don't understand, like you can't just go to someone who doesn't understand what you're going through and be like, Oh my God, my shorts fit. They're like, cool. Your shorts fit. Okay. <laughs> like, so having you was really a huge support system. Um, also like during our sessions, because during our sessions, you were constantly reminding me like overshoot does come off, overshoot does come off. Like, look at these videos, look at these people, look at these testimonies. Um, and so I could call back on that. Um, and so even though it was kind of hard to believe, I could still call back on those resources that you had offered me. Um, self-love, I think that was the biggest thing. I would not have, my overshoot would not have come off if I didn't learn how to be kind to my body. Um, yep. And just intuition, listen to your body and it will come, which was something that blew my mind because I had believed that, you know, you have to fight against your body. I read something on your Instagram about how like you can win a battle, but you will not win the war. Ugh. And I just, I could not agree more because I remember there were days when I could make it through a diet. I definitely could, but look at me now. Like I've had to go through all of this because I thought I could fight my body. And now that I listen, now that I work as a team with my body, it's so much easier. Right. Um, would you say that because, well, I guess first question, do you at least sometimes have like not as great body image days still? Yeah. I would, some days I wake up and I'm like, oh, okay, we <laughs> definitely need a self-love exercise. We're going to avoid mirrors today. Um, okay. We got this. Okay. Ooh, we're beautiful. I'm beautiful. Okay. Um, but see, I and, love that you said that your instinct now, and I know this is because you've been practicing it for so long is I need a self-love exercise. It's not, yes. how can I manipulate my body somehow, which I think totally would have been the old way you would have thought, right? Um, it's, yeah, so go ahead. You were going to elaborate on that. Um, so I just, I definitely have days where I mm. don't want to take pictures. I don't want to see myself. I don't want people to see me. And then I just have to remind myself, like the body you have today is the same body you had yesterday when you were extremely confident. So let's bring that back because my body alert wow, deserves love 25, <laughs> eight, you know, it, I'm, my body has done so many things for me. It deserves to be loved. It deserves to be appreciated, appreciated. And I want to make sure that I'm offering those things as often as possible. So it's no longer like, wow, today's a bad body image day. Let me be horrible to myself. Let me put myself through a workout. Let me not eat today. It's wow we're struggling today. I need to eat more. I need to make sure that I'm listening. I need to be super careful with my energy today. I need to be super intuitive today because I know that I'm not in the best spot. Um, and on those days I listen a little extra. I make sure not to work out on those days because I never want a correlation to form between working out and a bad body image day. Um, and then the next day I'm back. I usually it's a day long thing uh -huh. and I'm happy with my body again the next day. Okay. Gotcha. Um, would you say that just because I think that it's important to recognize that like, this is not a straight line, it's not perfect. Are there times where, even though you're like so good at it now and you're in such a practice, are there times that it's difficult to get yourself to want to do the self-love exercises but then you make yourself do it anyway. Yes. And honestly, there are some days where I don't want to, and I won't. Some days I really do struggle so much that I'm like, all right, you need a self-love exercise. Well, I don't want to do a self-love exercise. I'm going to sit in my bed and throw a fit about it for a little bit. Like, <laughs> And I genuinely do have days like that where I know what I need. I know what my body needs. I know what my mindset needs and I won't give it to myself simply because I still have that back and forth pull. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I'll forever struggle with, I think, because we have good days and I'm obviously 10 times better than I was a year or even two ago, but we're all still human and 
perfection is impossible. And so I think I will forever have those days where I don't want to give my body what it needs or what it deserves. And that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. So then when you allow that to happen, which, you know, I think sometimes it's so important to just let those emotions come out and, and, and actually acknowledge the way we feel instead of, I mean, replacing is so important, but like, you don't want to go so far as to say, I'm not allowed to feel right. Which you're not. Um, how do you then pull yourself out of it so that you don't allow that to then become this negative spiral that turns into the next day and the next day and so on? Um, so one of my biggest things I journal every night and at the end of every journal, I say, um, like a closing out statement. So today was rough or I struggled with this today, but tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow is my chance to fix these things. And then my last sentence is always, I love myself. And then the following day, I kind of get myself into the mindset of today is new. Things happened yesterday. Struggles happened yesterday. Things weren't great yesterday, but yesterday is already in the past. And today I have a new set of 24 hours to fix what happened Amazing. to make today a better day. Amazing. And so I try to start my days with that mindset every day. Right. And sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes I do struggle again, because like I said earlier, we're still human. Um, but just trying to remind myself that it's okay to restart every day. Definitely. What do you think has kept you because those days happen, you know, and it's so normal. What do you think has kept you from going back? to, you know, self-hate and, and all these restrictive behaviors and so on? My newfound freedom, I think, is the biggest thing because so much freedom comes when you learn to love yourself. You know, mm-hmm. food freedom, freedom, social freedom. Like, I can allow people to see me. I can go to social gatherings and I don't feel like I'm hiding the whole time. Yeah. I don't feel like I have to not eat because I'm larger than everyone around me. I don't feel like I can't, um, you know, participate in active things because of my body. Like I remember feeling in like PE classes, I remember feeling like they were the worst thing in the world because I felt big. I felt like Mm -hmm. if they saw me doing these things and I was going to be judged now, no, I'm like, I love me. I accept me. I want to go have fun. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's okay. And so it's just the freedom is definitely the thing that keeps me from going back. I never want to be in a position where I don't love myself anymore because I have to live with me (laughs) for the rest of my life. Like I couldn't imagine living with a partner or a best friend or someone that hated me, you know, Mm -hmm. if they were constantly telling me how horrible I was and how I needed to change and I wouldn't want to live with them anymore. Like I'd be like, get away from me. So I shouldn't do that to my body. Oh, so well said. Yeah, exactly. You're welcome. Um, so when you have like, let's say you're having a not as good bo- uh, body image day and you already have like a gathering, you know, you're going to go to, is there like a, a habit of self-talk that you get yourself into when you're like, okay, but I'm going to, I'm still going to go and I'm going to like find a way to still feel confident in my skin when I'm around these people and we're eating and so on and so forth, that type of thing? Um, yeah. So my biggest thing, my favorite compliment is you're a badass. So I, I look in the mirror and I'm like, you're a badass. Let's go. You got this. Um, and I like to think of me and my body as two separate people sometimes. So I say, um, we're, because I feel like it helps me disconnect. We are beautiful. We are, strong we are all of these amazing things because it helps me remember that it's not just me that I'm treating because I'm such a kind person I never want to hurt someone else's feelings so when I can think of my body as somebody else it allows me to then be kinder Mm. um so we are is one of my biggest things I've used that a little bit during the video and so I just wanted to explain that um that's just my favorite thing I like to look in the mirror and say we are beautiful we are badass just as a reminder that it's gonna be okay and we're gonna get over whatever it is that I'm struggling with that day 
That's amazing. I love that because you. you're welcome because I see you've taken this and, and done even more with it than just me. So um, kudos to you because you can you. be welcome. Um, you know, I do kind of, I like to say sometimes you, you do have to almost look at it like you are two separate people at times and you got to be your own big sister or your own best friend, your own cheerleader and get in there and say things like that. Like, you know, and so that dialogue, if you guys uh, want to try that instead of just saying you are, cause it might be really helpful to say, no, no, you and me, cause I got you girl. Like we are badass. We are beautiful. We are amazing. We're going to go in there and have a great time. Whatever you want that self-talk to look like. I like that a lot. I'm going to quote. Yeah. And I feel like disconnecting my body from me was the biggest thing in my recovery. You had me do an exercise. I actually just recently found the letter that you had me write to my body a few months ago. And I think that was a breakthrough for me in recovery was being able to realize that my body deserved love. Like my friends deserve love. Like my family deserves love. And that's just, that's been probably the biggest aspect of my recovery of losing my overshoot of becoming who I am is realizing that my body deserves to be treated kindly. Mm, Yeah, exactly. So right. Um, Well, I think uh, one more thing that I thought of that uh, this question's actually been coming up a lot. So definitely want to get your perspective. If you uh, had, you know, when you got to like whatever your heaviest weight was, like you said, you don't know what the actual number was. So do you think that if you had had to stay there, would you still have stuck with recovery? Yes, simply because I didn't even know overshoot was coming off when I had become recovered um, just because I had realized that I needed to love me because like we've talked about, it's a roller coaster. I could be one weight today and a couple pounds heavier tomorrow, a couple pounds lighter the following day. And if my self-love is set on a number, then that's definitely not self-love. Like if you cannot love yourself at every weight, whether it be your heaviest or your lightest, then there needs to be some improvement in your self-love. So even without the loss of overshoot, recovery was something that I'd already chosen. um, And I had to accept in fully giving in, I had to accept that my body was going to choose what I look like. There you go. Yeah. And uh, something um, this clicked for me recently while I was talking with somebody I really believe that we all go through this, this overshoot aspect of it um, as an, uh, from an emotional standpoint. Our body makes us face our worst fear, which is like getting to whatever you think the biggest version. And it, it, for people that keep like gaining weight and gaining weight and gaining weight, it's because you're still not like facing that fear And then I think from there, it's like the lesson here is that you have to learn to love and accept yourself at your worst fear of, of being the biggest version. And so if you can't, if you refuse to do that, then what I've seen is the weight continues to climb. So, um, do you, does that resonate with you, with your, yes, definitely. I feel like I was kind of rejecting self-love at the beginning because it is hard, you know, you spend you obviously don't go into an eating disorder with self-love. Like you cannot starve your body, force yourself to purge, force yourself to go through all the things that you do during an eating disorder and say you have self-love. Like (laughs) they just don't coincide. Um, And so I, it was just definitely a huge point for me. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, you've come so far. Thank you. You're welcome. So, I mean, you still have all, all of like your base qualities, but like sometimes now it seems like you're a whole different person. Do you feel like that sometimes? Yes, completely. <laughs> and I get family that tells me that all the time too, because there were people that I, um, I was living with my dad at the time um, when I was going through all of the eating disorder stuff that I was going through. Um, and now I don't see them as often because my parents switch custody. So when they see me, they're like, 
you're so different. And I'm like, thank you. Because I've put in the effort. I have tried so hard because I did not love who I was at the time. Like I could not stand myself. And I've put in a lot of work to become somebody that I'm okay with living with for the rest of my life. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's so obvious. You just, you have this glow about you now. (laughs) And uh, I was saying this to her the other day when we were talking about doing the interview and I was asking her, you know, how her day was going. And she was just making it sound like the best day ever. And I said, that's something I love about you is you just, you always find a way (laughs) to make every day that you describe to me just sound like the most fun day ever. And you said, I said, it is, it's because every single day genuinely is the best day. Yesterday was better than the day before. And today was better than yesterday. And tomorrow will be better than today. Yeah, because such, it's another day that you're waking up yeah. and that's amazing mm. such an amazing mindset to come from it's like mm. obviously you're welcome we all have these challenges but you're just you're already like no I'm gonna find ways to be grateful for not just something but like multiple things in my day multiple people multiple experiences so that when I explain it it's not just yeah hung out with you know so and so it's like we did this and then it was this and then and then I read a book and it was amazing and, you know so yes it's so inspiring thank you You're welcome well um was there anything else that you wanted to bring up or mention about overshoot or anything I, I think the biggest thing like I would give advice I think just stick to it because like I said I did not expect it to come off. I was like, nope, this isn't going to happen. I'm going to be stuck here and I'm going to have to accept that. And eventually I did. But if you stick with it, if you continue to love yourself, if you continue to listen to the things that your coach or that your resources are telling you, it does happen. Like you do get to become that person who shares their testimony because they're right. (laughs) It seems like they're not. It seems like everyone's telling us that it's going to happen and they're just feeding us full of lies, but it happens and it's genuine and it's amazing. Yeah. And that it absolutely, without a doubt, most importantly, has to come from a place of self-love first, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you again so much. I really appreciate you coming on here again and doing another interview. People loved the last one. So I know they're going to be like, oh, yay, it's her. I mean, I literally had people that are, you know, 30, 40 years older than you that were like, wow, that was so inspiring to hear from her. It doesn't matter the age to me. Just if anything made them kind of like, wow, if she can do it, like I can too. Because, you know, we all know how hard it is to, to do I mean it's hard in different for different reasons at different ages but like for when you started and everything and having to go through school and just everything through puberty and all that stuff on top of all of it like that's a lot to throw on your plate with recovery and you did it and you're already where you are coming from this place of such self-love and gratitude and positivity you're going to carry that forth with you throughout the rest of your life and you are inspiring other people good i'm glad yeah so okay guys um we're gonna sign off from the interview so thanks so much for watching and uh until next time (laughs)